Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the LPL here broadcast in English on Twitch TV. I'm Rapid. With me is Nero, and you can see the recap of game number one. The one stat it doesn't show you on the screen is uh, game time, <laughs> which uh, was actually a very long, drawn-out game just because of World Elite's emphasis on farming. They wanted to uh, just get the CS, get the kill, or not get the kills, just stall the game out and let their carries carry. But look at the MVP, it's no surprise, it's UZI's score of 9, 1, and 3, carrying his team incredibly hard. He outfarmed Wei Zhao by over 100 CS, and in for a team who's trying to play the farm game, you should probably at least win that if you're going to, uh, you know, spend so much time farming things out there. <laughs> the world's smallest Teemo hat for the middle LPL caster. But uh, what do you think about the first game? What was your uh, your thoughts on uh, LP on on World Elite's just super farm strat that didn't work out, Nero? Well, just let me come back to the MVP for a second because actually Zero was uh, sitting at a tight MVP points with Uzi Yai before this game, so that is actually interesting. Finally, the AD carry overcomes his support, but if Zero gets an MVP right here too, he'll once again be tied with his AD carry from his team. That is really interesting. And also, yeah, just coming back to this matchup, that is really weird. World Elite, they put themselves in a position where they wanted to farm as much as possible. Zix came out on top. Kogma did not. But still, Korn was not doing too much. And Starhorn, without doing anything big, they still won the game just because they got the goal lead from the Dragons from the Turs that World Elite didn't even try to defend. They didn't lose the game because they were the worst team. Of course, that is the case in every game, but I don't feel like it was only that. They just lost because they didn't know what to do. It's not that they didn't know what to do. It's like they had a very clear-cut strategy. It's sit Wei Zhao in the lane forever and let him finally somehow get six items. Uh, that never happened because Star Horn, you can see there, uh, I think they had like a 60% control over the jungle uh, in that uh, stats screen that was just on your screen. Uh, and if you actually look at the, uh, the standings, which are probably also very important to check out, uh, you can see that there's only one point uh, separating World Elite from EDG. So... If they picked up two wins here, they would take over second place. But if they pick up zero wins and give those to Starhorn, they actually drop down to fourth place. So there's a lot on the line here for World Elite. If they pick up at least one, then they'll tie EDG, uh, who picked up zero points after getting 2 0'd by Young Glory. Uh, this is not where World Elite or EDG thought that they'd find themselves. So big upsets all across LPL this week. First it's Young Glory, now Starhorn possibly overtaking World Elite for that third place spot. Yeah, we're just talking about the top half of the standings. Okay, World Elite are not doing too well, they are falling down. Starhorn maybe overtaking their enemies, EDG alongside with OMG in the top. But just look at Young Glory, they won a 2-0 right here. They got three points right now, they are sitting at the fifth place tie alongside with In Invictus Gaming and LGD. One more win and these guys will not really have to worry about being in the last place like they were in the in all the previous weeks in this split. And, and in fact, ironically enough, if Young Glory pick up two, two, zero, two more 2-0 two zero victories... Actually, no, no, no. With, with their wins tonight, that is actually an accurate score. So they're, they're tied for fifth place. Um, so Young Glory are tied for fifth. If they pick up one more 3-0 or one more 2-0, they'll actually go into third place ahead of Starhorn or they would or they'll be tied for Starhorn if they only get one game here so crazy standing is going to be switched up a ton over the course of the next week and uh well you guys will be here to watch it of course in English here on Twitch TV so I'm super excited to get into game number two I have to know if Starhorn have what it takes to close out game two because World Elite are just Having the struggles, 0-4 for the week, now 0-5, looking for at least one game on their three-game week. Alright, so we are just waiting to get into the second game of this matchup. It appears like we are having a little bit of problems because we are waiting a little bit too long, but no worries, we will be getting into this one quite shortly, and that is really, really 
great to see Stahon finally coming out on top and against World Elite, against such a great team. But right now, what are World Elite supposed to really do to come back out of this slump? The One of the best teams in China and they are just doing so bad right now. Yeah, kind of the end of an era here. World Elite, like, they slumped last season. Bad, bad time for them. They come back this season with all cylinders firing, and they just look incredibly dominant coming up through, like, the first six weeks of play. But here in week number seven, they are uh, they are finding a big, big slip. Like, you can afford to have a bad game, you know, every once in a while, but three bad games in a row, and something is, uh, something's wrong. You can see there on your screen, uh, the man himself, Insect, with a pretty strong performance that last game as well. Went a little bit over aggressive a couple times, but wound up redeeming himself. And let's go ahead and hop into champion picks and bans for game number two. It's our last game of the night as World Elite take on Star Horn. It's a battle for third place. Yeah, so, well, the bans kind of storming through. I'm just banning everything quite quickly. And we'll get to see if Star Horn will come out on top this time around. And will they choose to pick this phase once again? I don't think so. They shouldn't really be going for this unorthodox pick. Alright, so nothing too surprising as far as the bands are concerned. Uh, everything pretty standard band out there. But this time around, there's no Leona pick. It's going to be a thresh for a Starhorn. Or they're still looking for uh, for Conan's pick. If he grabs Leona again, I'm going to have a few questions. Because once again, they pick a Kog'Maw for Wei Zhao. Uh, his Kog'Maw farmed a lot, and that's about it. Did nothing but die that last game. And honestly, this is on Wei Zhao. If he wants to be greedy enough to require all this farm, all this solo lane time. Oh, the login on Tristana too. What is this? I don't know if World Elite have been taking some lessons from uh, maybe Team Curse in North America and they want to bust out the mid lane Tristana uh, and go AD. This could also be Ninja's AP Tristana. This is not what I expected. Well, so what do you want to do if you don't really want to give away this super strong AD carry to your enemy? You pick it up for the middle lane. You just pick it, is... yeah. Definitely going to be a really interesting pick, but on the other hand, Korn also should have something in his pockets. Okay, this could also be like the flip side of that, and it could be an AP Kog'Maw for Ninja. Oh, yeah. And an AD Tristana in the bottom lane for Wei Zhao. Like, you can play this either way. Uh, AP Tristana is actually pretty bad uh, in a lot of situations, especially in professional, like, competitive play. So it, I'm expecting the AP Kog'Maw from Ninja. But at the same time, like, we haven't seen either one of those for an incredibly long time. I remember there's this uh, mini clip during the uh, the breaks where uh, pro players will play a, like, a 1v1 Kog'Maw Earth Mode game. It's pretty funny to watch, but we haven't actually seen an AP Kog'Maw for a while. And there's actually the, the last two picks, the lockdown, or the lock-in, rather. Fair amount of lockdown, too. A Skarner Braum locked in for World Elite, and UZI grabs a Lucian, so... He's looking to win it early, because if he doesn't, the late game is definitely there again for World Elite. <laughs> Last time it was two hyper carries, now it's three. They're just piling on the late game, but can they make it there? Alright, so it's not only the mid AP Kog'Maw, it's also a summoner spell that we haven't seen for just such a long time. Cleanse being brought into the game. Wow, I didn't really expect to see that anymore. Now keep in mind, Cleanse does not work on Suppression, so it's not going to be good against Garner. Uh, but actually, I didn't catch if they changed some of their spells there at the last second before we changed screens. So, was that actually a Cleanse locked in? I think that, yes. <laughs> Alright, so a Cleanse coming out. Uh, Alright, we'll see that in the game. That is a massive one. You know what I'd love seeing in my games? I love seeing 25 minutes with zero kills on a mid lane fizz. I love 40 minute games when the team is horribly far behind. And I love my games with an AP Kog'Maw in the middle. So that's what I'm excited for so far. And this time around, World Elite, I mean, how many hyper carries do they need to win? And is Starhorn's early game pressure that they definitely will have going to be strong enough 
to bring themselves a victory in game number two. We're going to take a quick break, but don't go anywhere. We've got an AP Kogma and one more game coming your way as World Elite will take on Starhorn Royal Club in the last game of the night. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the LPL here in broadcast in English on Twitch TV. Uh, I'm Rapid, with me is Nero, and we're hopping out onto the rift for our last game of the night. It's SHRC, Starhorn Royal Club, and they're taking on World Elite. And we, with a very heavy farm-based strategy in game one, there's like, all right, double, double threat, double hyper carry, we got this late game. Well, it didn't work out. They fell very far behind off of just giving every objective to Starhorn. And now they're trying it with three hyper carries. Ninja with an AP Kogma there in the middle lane. We also do have a Tristana on the AD carry and the Jax in the top lane. So as you said, three hyper carries. That is definitely going to be an interesting one. But we have seen an AP Kogma in the LPL already. Wayless has picked it up, mm -hmm. but to not the best extent, though. Well, Conan gets chunked out there. He's going to have to recall, maybe take that pressure off the map. But um, like you said, yeah, Wayless, and Wayless is actually known for his AP Kogma, at least back from his days in the LSPL. So it's not like it was a super big mystery for him, but out of Ninja, like, like people say that... Um, uh... <sighs> There, there are mid laners in. I'm, I'm trying to remember. I can't remember who exactly that was said of. Um, it was IG's mid laner. Has... Yeah, exactly. Zatai is known for having the biggest champion pool of just about everyone. But has Ninja played the same champion twice? Like it seems to be like he picks a different one every game. All right. So we do have a Lux though uh, on Corn. So that is a champion that Zatai also did pick up the previous time he played. A game, so Starhorn may have wanted to pull this off before the tie, or maybe not. Or maybe it is just a thing to react to this mid lane Kogma. It's definitely going to be an interesting thing. Also, in the trade off, uh, when Zero and UZI met uh, Conan right there in the jungle at the very early stages of the game, they. I'm um, actually wondering why Zero picked up the Flay as the first skill and not. The death sentence. It's true. Death sentence traditionally is the better level one because it allows you to make big catches and has a lot of CC attached to it. Um, so kind of confused to that. I won't really impact a whole lot early on because he's going to be helping out with the double jungle. But my question is right now, like this is a different take on the way that you get your early game experience because instead of going for a top laner and jungler uh, as a the duo lane in the jungle, oh no, insect actually f or screwed that up pretty difficult or pretty hard he left a goal or he left a lizard at the red buff so he didn't clear it out i'm, I'm not sure if that's deliberate because traditionally you'd want to clear the buff so you have the timer on it instead he and cole are actually going to come down and pressure this bottom turret in a 4v0 this is something starhorn did last game and we really didn't expect it i don't think world elite did either but this time around i, I think we have a better reaction to it they have salmay up at the top lane he'll be able to help them take down that turret even though it's 3v4 well i've actually seen more of these little lizards left alive than killed hmm. lately in the lpl but still yeah exactly as you said they do want to have this timer but i think that uh, well insect plans to be in the enemy's jungle for quite a long time and quite frequently so he will also keep that in mind and and he'll most probably get the other one right and that's my point like if you're going to be spending a lot of time in the enemy jungle you don't want to leave monsters up so you can get the buff respawn but off the 4v0 bottom lane push uh world elite are or rather starhorn are gonna try for this early dragon i think they're in a pretty good spot to do it but if you look at the light binding from corn it's gonna land on axine the boy dudes comes out and it's a flash out from axine he is not gonna be getting in there for the dragon that will be the first dragon of the game going to starhorn royal club all right world lead versus starhorn royal club the second matchup uh, in this exact 
match and uh, well there you go world lead will most probably be taking down the turret in the top lane as the first ones this time around because we have a lot of pressure coming out from Weishao right there and his teammates are about to join him now Korn's busting out the Zatai Lux uh, we saw it in a double snipe comp yesterday for uh, for IG didn't quite work out my question is why do you pick a Lux here I'm thinking it's just to, like you know farm things out, maybe go for like binding burst combos onto Ninja or Wei Zhao. And that's a cool idea and everything, but I feel like you just pick Orianna here and go for the wombo combos that way. A little bit of a different take on that champion. We'll see if it works out for Korin as he is actually getting pushed underneath his turret here by Ninja. He's still looking to put on that pressure. Yeah, so we do have a turret for a turret. In the end, still Stahon do have the adventure because they took this really early dragon. And that was a, a nice one. They did not lose too much health. They did, did not let the enemy... Oh, Insect them. gets a perfect jump here on a ninja. What is Ninja doing so far up there in the lane? Big TP coming down, not willing to get baited out. Now the TP's cancelled. Ninja gets out of that alive. That was a perfect gank by Insect putting on so much pressure. Ninja, gotta watch out for that positioning. No, it's uh, so still no kill going down, but we still do have a little bit of an advantage in favor of Stahon. Will it be the same game as it was in the previous one? Will once again Stahon, without any kills, come out on top? That is a big question, and I would rather not see that game played once again. <laughs> Wei Zhao is positioning so aggressively. He like, walked all the way behind the turret and was like, I'm going to jump on you, Cola. I'm going to do it. And Cola's just like, I don't think think so. Well, now that Conan's there, it's a little bit more likely. Battle of the junglers down over the Wraith camp, and it is Zach Seen who is able to uh, win that out there. But it's a battle over the bl <laughs> the big blue-white. We'll see who's able to get it. the smite out there. I think Insect actually did use his smite, but Zach Seen's the one that grabs it. Alright, so this game, we are still waiting for it to explode in the team fights. Most probably the same way that it was in the previous one, but I think that before the 20th minute this time around, Korn, he doesn't play Fizz, he does play a Lux instead. So, the ultimates might be a big thing. We have seen Zetai coming out with some pretty big ones yesterday. And I think that Korn may be able to pull off the same thing this time around too. And especially facing off a Kog'Ma, which is... Uh, Pretty squishy champ. Yeah, and so I leave it to Zatai. Zatai, like you said, came out with some big ones, and now it is Korn. We'll see how big those are uh, in this game. He's going to get a blue buff, so that'll make him a little bit uh, bigger. <laughs> Not sure if this analogy is really going where I want it to, but uh, it comes back to the mid lane with enough uh, CDR, AP, and... Uh, and mana to just AoE wave clear against Ninja. But Ninja has set up a position for himself in the mid lane where he can pretty inf pretty much infinitely wave clear. So we can sit mid as long as he wants. He's not really under a whole lot of pressure and get as much CS as he wants here against Lux, who's just going to be even ulting the wave just to make sure that he keeps it pushed out. So great position for Ninja. Uh, Wei Zhao is up 10 CS in that matchup. He's going for the Shiv first build. And... <sighs> I don't know. I, I definitely don't like that if you're in this sort of AFK farm mode where you want to go for like the, the more effective items like, you know, big BF swords or Blades of the Ruined King. But he will go shift first. That's going to give him a lot of wave clear. Once again, looking for more of a farming perspective from World Elite than actually trying to force objectives. You see, I went for this shift quite quickly in the previous game too. So, well, that is a normal thing coming out in the LPL actually from the Tristanas apparently. Uh, but yeah, exactly. They do have a 2v2 lane matchup in the bottom lane. And uh, this time around, Weishao is coming out a little bit better, which is finally good. All world leads. Uh, actually, they're coming out on top in the farm on pretty much every single lane. Hmm. Yeah, Weishao is leading in the farm department, so at least that's working out so far. Last game, of course, UZI over 100 CS more at the end of the game than... Uh, than Wei Zhao. So if if you commit to this farm strat, you have to make it work. Insect gonna take a lantern. Oh wait. Man, nope. scumbag Insect. He's like, screw you, Zero. I don't want no lantern. Stealth's in there. And oh, Wei Zhao is gonna get... Oh, the flay does not stop the repel. Death Sentence still lands on a Conan. We got a TP coming down bottom. It's gonna be Insect trying for the root again. This time he gets it. Conan goes down. It's a... 
4v0 or 4v1 bottom lane now as Wei Xiao is forced out of there. Axing there kill for some backup. Zero, well, that is true. Oh, nice. I guess he deserves it after landing that uh, death sentence. Insect did not have what he wanted. Oh, Axine with another out smite onto Insect. That's two for two on jungle camp smite aways. Yeah, Sahon will be creating a little bit of pressure on this inner bottom turn, but uh, Salme does have a big wave in the top too. Death sentence lands onto Axine. Not a whole lot of damage. Look at Wei Zhao starting to get p picked off there. Oh, nice lantern onto Korn. Gets him out of the danger zone. Alright, so as we said, uh, that Wei Xiao is finally doing a little bit better in the farm. He gets forced out of the lane just because uh, his support went down and the eye comes back. And well, we'll see how it uh, turns out. Well, the dragon will be spawning, so Starhound will be looking for this one once again for the taking. And it's World Elite who are creating a lot of pressure on the dragon pit actually in all of their games. And this time around, they cannot really come out on top of Starhorn. I feel, I feel like the farm strategy is working out much better for World Elite this game. And if that's the strat you're going to go for, then... I mean, maybe Slow and Steady is going to win the race here now with so many uh, late game carries for World Elite now. But uh, the question for me is, like, when you push things so late, when you pile up all this farm and don't really do anything with it, that means that the game is kind of decided off of like one big fight. You farm for 40 minutes and then you fight each other and one team aces the other one and wins the game. To me, that doesn't seem like the style that Starhorn are trying to play, especially in game one where they were so objective focused. Took down dragon number one here, but now it's actually World Elite that are going to grab a dragon. So Starhorn letting up a little bit of that pressure. Yeah, even though they took the first turret in the bottom lane, especially, that gives them a little bit of the map control around the bots, uh, half of the map. But they still didn't pull off this uh, second dragon. That is weird to see. Actually, I definitely expected Starhorn to take this one. Okay, World Elite, they get a point. And this is back to World Elite. Like we said, dragon and pressure and control is so important for them. It's something they've been very well known for, but... But was completely non-existent in game number one. They didn't take a single one of them. Uh, actually, no, they took one. They took one. All right. Correct myself. But uh, in, in game number two here, it's starting to look a lot better. You can see the gold count now even at 12 minutes, whereas in game one, they were like a 1,000 gold behind. Wait, what? Okay, Wei Xiao is going for like the cheese build here with nothing but crit chance. <laughs> I guess that's the only part of an Infinity Edge he could afford at the time. So if he does crit, then... Sweet, <laughs> but if he doesn't, he has no attack damage items built up there. He's still sitting on just the extra AD from a door hands blade. Yeah, and he still doesn't have this infinity edge, so he doesn't have the crits a little bit stronger than normally. So even if he does crit, it still is not gonna be quite enough against the UZI's BF sword and a pickaxe. I've never been a big fan of the nothing but crit build. I feel like that's a, like a uh, top lane gangplank build where you just like put in all the crit chance and just hope for the best. Very, very binary. Either you get the crits and win, or you get no crits and you lose super hard. So, Wei Zhao for the time being is gonna be stuck in farm mode. And uh, the other thing about crit is it makes it harder to CS because sometimes you randomly crit minions and they die before you can kill them. So, I'm not sure that's necessarily gonna help Wei Zhao out in that department either. But we'll see. World Elite, they're hanging on. Passive game does reward their farming style. Yeah, I'm talking about hit or miss. I think that World Elite, after losing five games in a row, might actually find some luck left out there somewhere in the corners, in the darkest corners of the world. So let's hope that Wei Xiao can land these crits right now and maybe kill someone around the lane, grant the first kill to World Elite. But still not much going on, just the farming. As you said, the farm strat is working. But to what extent, we'll get to see a little bit later, because that's when UZI started owning in the previous game. It was around the 30 minutes mark when he started getting the big advantage over Wei Xiao. Starhorn is just kind of desperately looking for any opportunity to pick a fight. They come down for Dragon, but spoiler alert, it's just not there. So now they're forced to look elsewhere for objectives. And uh, I don't know, what else is out there? They've got... Every turret, except for the bottom one, 
S R H C or S H R C. Gotta get my acronyms right. Um, still unable to force a fight. Oh, so 15th minute in the game will hit in just a second, and we are still looking at Starhorn versus World Elite. With Starhorn still having a little bit of a gold lead, it's not too much though. Well, the fights are not happening, and if Starhorn cannot really keep up in the farm, then they really should be looking for something to happen. Uh, as far as the CS department goes, if you're going for a farm war and you're losing it, that's probably never a good idea. It's not the way things are supposed to go according to plan. Uh, Starhorn winning in the CS department in every single lane except for the jungle, and uh, I guess now except for bottom lane, there's like a 5 CS lead, but... Uh, the, the biggest thing to watch out for, of course, is going to be uh, the the top lane as far as CS is concerned, because Cola is monstering that farm up there. He used to be 25 CS up, now he's only like 15 CS up, so it's not that big a deal, a deal anymore. But if you're farming, you have to make it count. And oh, there's a BF sword. Finally, Wei Xiao buys an AD item. Yeah, finally, he will get a little bit of a boost, uh, but there in the top lane we might actually uh, see some kind of a gank on Cola from his team. Yeah, so Infinity Edge on the other hand though on UZI, well that is a kind of a big difference. Insect though, looking for the catch there, jumps on Axine, the death sentence lands too. There's a lantern over the wall, but it snaps, so nobody's able to come in there. Axine's gonna get jumped on, Ignite's sticking down there. Can he get taken out? The ball strikes good. Insect grabs himself a, uh, a kill. First kill of the game for him, second one for the team. Yeah, and finally, the Bola strikes hit because we have seen multiple Rengas throughout the two days, and... We saw a lot of missed Bola strikes. Finally, yes, like hits the first one, opening the fight, and then the second one, finishing it quite quickly. Yeah, Insect has actually been stepping up. I am still pretty skeptical of Insect's performances. He's definitely seen, seen better days, uh, that's for sure. Uh, especially his item build here is a little bit weird, too. He built the CDR boots for more ults. And uh, unlike CLG's Dexter, he has actually grabbed a uh, bone tooth necklace trinket instead of going for the sweeping lens. Of course, this game is going substantially better for him. Uh, completes the Riggle's Lantern, sells a potion. He must be really close to an item. Yeah, grabs a longsword out there instead. Wait, what is he? Okay, grab longsword. Uh, wait, he, he rebought the potion. All right. It's like a love hate relationship. He's like, I don't want you. Go away. I'm selling you. Then he's bought, bought it back again. Either way. Uh, so Insects coming back very, very strong after that pick around the Baron area. But it's not about Baron, it's about the Dragon right now in World Elite. They got their second Dragon of the game. See if they yeah, can take we've... another. We've only got the 18th minute in the game right here, so it's not about the Baron, definitely. World Elite will definitely be focusing around this Dragon though, especially after losing this kill in the top lane. They want to get something to pull back into this game. Apparently something very exciting happening right now. I'm kind of missing it as World Leader. Just looking for posturing here. And they're actually going to do the same thing that, uh, that Starhorn did. They're pressuring the dragon. If they can't get that, then they'll pressure the blue buff and just keep pouring it on, forcing SR SHRC to, to make something happen. Mm, but I search SHRC actually looking really strong right now, and World Elite still not going for this dragon. Instead, they're going to look to push mid, and that's actually going to work out. Oh, the laser comes down right in there onto Axin. He is going to be the first one to go down, and oh, follow up kill though onto Insect. They trade it back. Wei Xiao with pretty questionable positioning. The crits come down from UZI, and he'll take down Conan. Disengage good for SHRC as they will take down three for one exchange. Salmei jumping in onto UZI, the heal, flay back onto Salmei. Now, can he get taken out there? He's going to get hit by the piercing light. Last stick of damage is not enough. <laughs> and UZI got too greedy for it. Ninja taking him out. Yeah, still, I think the Starhorn came out on top of this one, but they will not really be able to take the dragon as of yet. And once again, World Elite will just respawn and we will be coming back mm. to this fight over the dragon pit in just a second. But yeah, Uzi I just going down in this fight is not too lucky for 
SH. That was a uh, somewhat questionable positioning. And honestly, SHRC could have taken that dragon off the back of that fight if UZI had stayed alive. But instead, he went for the hashtag L LPL big plays. And, well, they certainly did not pay off there. Oh, Axine's going to get bound out there. Insect, though. Oh, my gosh. Look at this Kogma damage. Ninja's going to snipe him down. He gets the kill at the long range with the Bio Arcane Barrage, or the um, Living Artillery, rather. Ninja. He's, he's, he's pretending like he's playing Caitlyn. He's just sniping people down there. The Zolts. Yeah, though Caitlyn has a targeted ult, though, and Ninja is just showing his skill right now. Ninja's here, making him look like they're targeted. It's two kills he's picked up off of those uh, barrages. Conan, though, walks into the bush of death, tries to safeguard back out of there or uh, get out with the stand behind me. Tanks up that uh, culling with. The unbreakable, and he is unbreakable, getting out alive. Yeah, that's a nice one forward lead. So Starhorn can't really find anything else to come back into this game after losing mm. three kills in a fight. Oh, wait, why does Conan have a ruby sidestone? Like, my, I was under the impression that you were never supposed to buy that item. Like, you just keep it at the uh, the regular sidestone because of the way the, the, the ward trinkets work. I, I mean, all right. Uh, that does actually delay his uh, face of the mountain, too, which I, I feel like is probably the item he's going for. Uh, and something that should be noted is that Zero is going without a gold pretend item. So he will be behind in the gold department. Yeah, so... Well, actually, after buying this ruby sidestone, will you really be behind? So Conan just uh, spent the money that he gathered up with this uh, relic shield, I think. Yeah, but still, you can pour that into like a face of the mountain and like complete that for a lot of protection for uh, any of your carries. So. I don't know, a little bit questionable to dump that uh, extra gold there, but uh, the big thing to notice is that items are starting to come the way of World Elite. Uh, they may be a little bit down in kills and gold, but they are still up there in, as, as far as effectiveness is concerned. You already have the completed, uh, not no Seraph's Embrace, but uh, just the uh, Archangel Staff there for, uh, for Ninja. You've got the Infinity Edge Shiv combo that Wei Zhao's been looking for all game long. It's going to be a big power spike, but not just for him, for both AD carries. UZI's got those items too. Yeah, but just looking at Zero, he's not really building anything in specific. And just look at that, he has a no magic mantle and that's it. <laughs> so, yeah, just a side stone and not really much from Zero. We can't really tell what he is thinking without building this uh, gold generation item. Well... As you said, World Elite will be ramping up right now. They do have three hyperscaling carries. UZI, what, what is UZI doing? He's trying to catch out Sao Mei. There's Cola coming in there. Insect wants the Bola, and they will find the pick the laser gets pulled away from. And, okay, Sao Mei dies, but how much did SHRC blow for that chase onto Sao Mei? Like, holy cow, they hate that guy. Taking him out. In the meantime, of course, Wei Xiao is off doing his own thing. He's sniping things down in the bottom lane, taking out that turret and SHRC. They find a pick, but can't really do anything off the back of that. Might be able to take down top lane turret, but in the meantime, they're still pushing. They're still firing. Boom. Tower shot. Uh, Wei Xiao in the bottom lane looking to take down tower number two. Mid lane's turret goes down and World Elite come off three turrets ahead. Yeah, definitely a lot of Aggression around the turrets actually from World Elite, just baiting out on Salme. So a kill for two hurts. It's um, not a big deal for World Elite. They don't really care about losing this Jax once. That's a really good play actually. Oh, and we have two on one Fogma. Bush of Death here set up by World Elite. Uh, they even have like a couple of wards out there just to scout for anybody looking to face check. Uh, the only likely victim would be Cola, and I don't think he's going to go in for that. So, uh, yeah, a little bit miss, uh, miss time there. He actually did walk by the bush if uh, World Elite had stayed there. But, oh, the Rengar looking for a pick. Wei Zhao sees it in time. And gets back out alive. Well, the gold lead actually extremely close, even though... World Elite uh, coming out on top in the Dragons and in the turrets, so... Still, they are losing the farm comp that they are going for. So if you're losing in farm, 
you sort of fall back to sort of the final line of defense for any team comp. It's like, all right, we're losing in every possible way, but we got the late game. <laughs> So World Elite have to hold on for another 20 minutes and then they'll start finally start to just crush things down. Uh, to be honest, this entire series, Ninja has been outperforming the rest of his team. He's now 2-0-1 and while yes, he's played very safe champions that it's easy to farm on, Ziggs and AP Kog'Maw, um, they are not champions that are resistant to getting blown up instantly. So remaining Deathless still fairly impressive, especially with the, the big like burst bind combos coming in from in second corn. No, it's a world lead. Uh, Will starts to ramp up finally with this Kog'Maw actually having this Seraph's Embrace already. Alongside with Athens and the Holy Grail with Tristana sitting on an Infinity Edge and a Static Shift plus uh, the Last Whisper. But we are just waiting for this Jax to actually get a little bit more tanky and world lead can start winning this game, can start forcing the fights. Look at the way that Ninja's farming. He's he's being like the most passive farmer you could ever expect. Only poking out of his turret to farm with his ultimate. And then he's just walking back to take the jungle camps. He's farming wolves right now. So the farm lane mid is ridiculous. And you can see it's just A, very high CS, but B, equal. Both, uh, both mid laners. So once again, World Elite cannot find... Uh, the big discrepancy they're looking. Although they might not even be looking for a discrepancy in farm, just looking to get as much of it as they can. And they are, of course, being very successful in that regard. A little bit of stream lag. Bear with me. Uh, you can check out the standings while I uh, try to get the stream back up and running. We'll have this back for you guys in just a minute. All right, so actually just to keep you updated, uh, there's not much going on as you could expect. You know, we have a little bit of poke coming out from Ninja's ultimates, but that is not much. It is also going to be blocked by Korn's shield. So still everyone just going for the farm. It's like for the jungle. Oh, look at that we... laser, though. Holy cow, that's a lot of damage. Um, not sure if we're still, like, synced up or anything, but at least as far as World Elite's concerned, they will take down a dragon. So congratulations to them. They have started to regain their dragon centric cop but the dive in on the sal may or onto uh yeah sal may cola looking for that once again insect like i insect hasn't done a whole lot he, he got two picks early on and then he's been involved in the team fights so he's got 100 percent like kill or kill participation but he keeps jumping in again and again and again and he's actually grabbed the brutalizer as well as home guard enchants on his uh cdr boots just to make sure that he has as many ults as possible not too many of them working out, though. Yeah, and that is the big problem. So, well, the lead. They have taken this dragon right now. Finally, the gold lead extends to more than 100. But it's still not the biggest lead that we have expected to see in this game. And Starhorn, even though they have won the previous game quite easily, because they have lost one fight so okay they have they have been struggling by a little bit but right now how it looks like well it's just a matter of time for world lead to start forcing the fights and winning them actually especially with the three hyperscaling oh carries goodness. and also with this kana 509 ability power on ninja that is pretty scary he's already got the double snowball ap items with the uh, uh, death cap that gives you a percentage base boost and then another percentage AP boost from the uh, now completed Seraph's Embrace. So he's got flat mana, he's got mana regen, he's got AP and looking incredibly strong here. Ninja is in a great spot. AD carry is pretty equal. Uh, the big discrepancy mid lane, of course, is the presence of a Void Staff for Korn. So it's going to be very difficult for Salme to be able to tank through all the burst damage uh, that uh, Cole has thrown out. So it's Starhorn for going, who are going for the aggression and uh, maybe finally some ward coverage coming out from any of the teams. We do have a little bit of pings all around the map from World Lead, but Starhorn, they are definitely not paying too much attention to creating vision. Starhorn looking to push down mid lane. Of course, they've already taken down the first turret, so they're looking for tier two. Zero. Looking for the hook around the corner. 
Easy does it. TP on the turret, looking to start the fight. Turret actually goes down to about half health. Pull in on to Axine. There's the culling come out. Actually sniping right behind that turret. The laser gets flashed away from Finalis Funkel. Not quite so Finalis there on to Conan. And now we'll lead my actually be looking to turn around. I know, don't know why Stahon are actually going in the Baron area. Maybe just to ward it up, but I don't think that they want to start it out. I got so scared that uh, Starhorn were going to throw super hard trying to siege that turret out there, but they wisely back away. And they do force out the flash from Conan, as his uh, stand behind me was apparently on cooldown, or he was just a little bit too scared and had to dodge it. But um, we're the lead now on the aggressive, pushing up the mid lane. I feel like Cola's got to get there. No teleport means he is pretty dedicated to... Not really doing a whole lot. Yeah, now Uzi comes out on top massively in the CS. Oh, oh zero. Zero. He's trying to juke. He's trying to juke. And, and, and uh, the stream lag, it's a little bit real right now. So uh, pardon me as it uh, will rebuffer here. I'll give you guys a countdown. It's three, two, one. And there we go. Zero is alive. Huh. <sighs> Most stressful three seconds of my life. Yeah, Zero manages to stay alive, and stay alive. Mission accomplished, but still it doesn't give Stahon anything at all. They had a little bit of chances to get a kill there and there. Oh, Intec well, finally he... finds the catch on the way Zhao on a ninja, but neither one of them go down. Now, Finalis Falcon, of course, still on cooldown for Korn. Not able to snipe him out there. <laughs> Look at that AP Kogma damage. They force out Summoner heal from Uzi. Yeah, and just once again, Starhorn, they do find a, a pick with CC, but they cannot find the kill, and, and mm. I will not be able to win a game this way. Coming into the home stretch in this game, the, uh, the delays on stream are somewhat... Uh, Somewhat significant, I'll put it that way. So, trust me, you're not missing any of the action. We're just having a little bit of a rebuffer as we hop back into the game. No worries. You didn't miss a single thing. Still at just about 31 minutes. Yeah, so it's just a thing that happens every now and then. The stream gets uh, more lucky than ever. And we'll start on Still looking for the picks and then paying for it by a little bit and everyone just exchanging a little bit of damage. But we are still at the game of farming and, and not much else. Hmm, continuing to have minor issues here. Gonna do a quick little refresh and see if we can get ourselves right back into uh, uh, to the, uh, the stream for a, a better viewing experience overall. So bear with us as we uh, go through these minor technical difficulties. If we're missing anything in Crucial, Buddy Nero will keep us up to date. Well, I'm not too sure how far behind you fell, but uh, not trying to spoil, we do have a big fight going on. Doesn't decide too much of the game, but still Starhorn do come out on top. So we do have finally a little bit of an advantage for this team. All right, well, we're just in time for the replay at least. There's the snipe at the long range on the way Zhao, but it doesn't kill him off there. Nothing can catch World Elite as they are backing up. The culling coming in. There's the dive from Cola. And Axine gets culled, just barely survives the culling, but actually survives the entire fight. Now Cola's going to go down. This is the team fight you missed, so it is a replay. Flayback on a ninja, and now he's going to get cut out by the box. UZI coming back in, but some pretty extreme lag uh, helping us out. The, the suspense is killing me right now. I can't wait to see if ninja lives. The answer, of course, will be a no. The replay will finish... Uh, come back into what could be the start of another fight as Insect's gonna leap into two gets wait was that a buster shot over the wall like he got away from there pretty significantly quickly Conan of course will not be as lucky world elite find a pick and off of that now looking for Wei Zhao oh Wei Zhao has to watch out but no AP Kogma to snipe him down no AP Kogma to snipe him now but there's UZI to try and chase for him of course Tahon after winning the previous time they took the Baron too <laughs> Oh, we actually flashed away from that. Uh, the laser might still go down here to Cola. And he's the culling over the wall is just the tip. Not hitting. Zero's chasing away there. <laughs> Wei Zhao, where are you going to row? What are you going to do when Starhorn comes for you? And the answer is... Lag a little bit. 
I gotta see this. Oh, okay, he gets revealed. There's summoner heal, but that's a nice crit on the UZI. I can't find the damage for the kill. Yeah, and that's a wasted summoner heal right there. He knew that he's dead already. No way to run when enemies are collapsing onto you from every single possible side. So Starhorn now, after winning this big fight around the Baron Pit, getting this Baron, then winning another fight, they are looking quite strong and worldly just throwing away all the farm that they've built up up until now with simple kills for Starhorn. Weishao's positioning in pretty much every game that World Elite has played this week has been questionable at best. Uh, all starting to come out there. Use the eyes and kill percentage, but is able to back back out. Uh, nice snipe there. Catches Ninja down to half HP. But another turret falls. Now 4-4. Four to four. And oh, Insect. Oh, the, the empowered Bola Strike keeps him alive. Alright, so Starhorn building something up. Six, K in six kills lead right now. Looking at the gold, not too big of a difference at this stage in the game. We have 36th minute and just 3,000 gold difference. Did, did Samai just steal the blue buff? Uh, I'm not too sure if he was able to take that away from uh, from Insect. I'll see when they show the champions the next time around. I know Ninja's got a blue buff. Still looking to see if Samai was able to take that one down. Did not uh, Did not catch that. We'll get to see that as soon as we hover the screen over him, but well, he's gonna be on the split push. I don't think that we'll be looking at him quite quickly. Take a little bit of a break for a rebuffer, as uh, yeah, like you said, he is gonna go on the split push. Who's gonna go to stop him? Like, Cola has zero damage items, he does have a thorn mail, so he's like super tanky, but he's not really gonna do a whole lot as far as like 1v1 a Jax is concerned. Uh, Same building up the defenses and then actually skipping a little bit of them to go for the double offensive item build with a Blade of the Ruin King. But, uh, so yes. Yeah. We're seeing like the Storm Mail actually for the second time in the LPL and the first time we saw it against a double AP comp. This time around is a little bit more justified, but Ninja is the biggest member of World Lead at the moment. So why do you go for the Storm Mail once again? Uh, yeah, exactly. I, I think the Storm Mail primarily is to deal with... Uh, the hyper carry. The only reason that Cola exists right now is to dive Wei Zhao in the back line. Maybe Ninja, and Ninja is going to be big at shredding him down. But there's other things that can take care of Ninja, like uh, like Insect jumping in uh, to the team fight or Corn sniping him out. Uh, Wei Zhao is going to be a little bit farther back just because of uh, his, his auto attack range and maybe just deciding on how they want to split that uh, the dive. Because uh, honestly, there's a lot of the game riding on Cola and Insect. If they can't get to the back line, World Elite will destroy Starhorn. Yeah, and especially having a Skana and a Jax additionally to that Kog'Maw and Tristana. And you also have a Brom. So World Elite just have such a strong team, co team comp right now. But they can't really pull it off in the fights. And that's a weird thing. I'm just talking about this uh, previous one around the Baron Pit where Starhorn just came out on top, took the Baron, and started to... Kind of rule the game. Big pick I haven't actually seen do a whole lot this game has been uh, has been Axine. He's still uh, still a little bit. He's not really on that level where he's like, hey, I'm gonna run in the middle of the enemy team, grab somebody, and pull them back in. Uh, sitting at zero two two score, of course, uh, against Insect, who's been involved in seven out of ten of his team's games. That's 70% of their kills, so... I think I said Insect was involved in 70% of their games. I meant 70% of their kills. Of course, 2, 2, and 5. Uh, he's got 30% CDR, so that's actually pretty nice uh, as far as his ult's concerned. Puts it on about a 45 second cooldown, 50 second cooldown, something along that line. Still looking to get these engages. Has actually gone for a full offensive build. And he's actually building the Bilgewater Cutlass for some additional CC. Alright, so let's look at the difference between the supports at the moment right now. Because we pointed out at first that there is no gold generation item on Zero. And like right now, they do have the pretty much same items. But there is just this no gold generation item. There is a face of the mountain. And on the other hand, we do have just a Doran's shield. Which is not the biggest item that Zero would want to have. Brief little rebuffer puts us uh, about at the 39 minute mark. 
Um, for uh, for World Elite, uh, they have succeeded. This is success for them. It's 40 minutes, and they haven't lost the game, uh, which means that at some point, they just win off their team comp. Uh, Ninja has farmed up five items almost, and it's somewhat interesting. His last item is going to be a... Uh, a uh, uh, Landry's Torment. He does have that extra magic penetration. So he's got tons of penetration on, on his Kog'Maw. He's got a ton of extra damage, and he's 3-1. and one. Ninja can kind of 1v5 if he's got a front line in front of him, uh, which is usually where front lines are. Uh, but Wei Zhao's also got the same scale of damage. You've got Sao Mei who's building double offs of items. The damage and the scaling for World Elite is starting to get on, like, epic proportions and now oh insect he's gonna throw on the yomus trying to get in on to ninja he actually chooses to go in on to axine to get blown apart this cola coming in there but look at ninja's damage it's off the chiz arts and now there's nothing to stop wei Zhao from bouncing back in there gets those crits he gets crit down after flashing it on to use the eye use the eye will flash away there from sal may is gonna get the counter strike stun off there's the kill there on to use the eye and now it's zero gets a triple man flay but no damage to follow it up from corn an incredible play there, Ninja. Or not a, a very not incredible play by Insect, let's put it that way, and World Elite just show how much damage they have to dish out. Yeah, and actually we haven't seen this damage coming up from Ninja as of yet, so Insect couldn't really expect what to uh, what will come out from this Kogma, but yeah, World Elite will now get a chance uh, to get a shot at the Baron. And then well, they will be in the lead, so this game just changes over and over again. First of all, World Elite doing a little bit better in the farm. Then Starhorn coming back with the first blood, and then World Elite once again coming back with the fight. Mm -hmm. And we're going to get a quick replay of this fight. This is Insect making the worst engagement of his life right now. He's like, hey, let me build nothing but squishy items and explode instantly. Braum Ultimate is going to be huge for the zone there as Conan. Look at where Conan is. He is right in front of the back line. Brilliant positioning for World Elite, completely prepared for that engagement, and now look at Wei Zhao, he's flashing in there, and use the eye, I don't know who pays this man to get auto crits, but impressive, impressive uh, job there, at least making that fight a little bit more even. The duo lane dies, but the rest survive, World Elite come out with a big team fight win. Yeah, and Uzi, I definitely being a big factor in this I, uh, SH lineup, oh, that's a hard thing to say, actually, and uh, yeah, that's the only thing, and that's the problem. There's no deaths on Korn, though, so we have to give him credit for that. But here's the eye. He deals a lot of crits, as you said. That is not enough. There is also Wei Xiao. If he kills Ninja, there's Wei Xiao. If he kills Wei Xiao, there's Ninja. And also Sao Mei, Sin. Every single member from World Lead can do a lot in the fights and on the other hand, we only have UZI, especially with Insect just jumping in and evaporating. I mean, everybody knew that UZI was aggressive. Didn't see that, uh, still didn't see that one coming. Wound up pay paying for it with his life, but still. You gotta type uh, type a little bit of worth in all chat after that one. Um, World Elite solidly in the driver's seat. They're uh, still down a little bit in kills, but at this point, that's really just not what matters. Their champions are starting to hit that six item mark, and honestly, there's not a whole lot you can do if you're Starhorn Royal Club. You had 40 minutes to win the game, and they couldn't do it. And now you've got Jax with four items. Uh, you've got, uh, okay, Jax has three big items. You've got four items on your AD carry. F full build for eight Ninja's AP Kog'Maw. This, I even just bought the Leandry's Torment, so I don't know what you're supposed to do about that. He's got so much peel in front of him that this hyper carry lineup from World Elite is kicking into high gear. And World Elite will just be looking for the Sieges right now. As they got the Baron buffed him, why not? He'll just uh, probably take everything away from Starhorn. Exactly as this dragon later on that you could have seen going down in their favor. But still, just look at the farm difference in favor of UZI over Wei Xiao and the kills and pretty much everything. UZI is just a beast, but what does it mean if there's no team to back him up? Well, uh, the the guy that needs backup is Insect. He went into that last fight and was like, "Hey, I can uh, I can start it," but he didn't have anybody to finish it with him. He was way too aggressive, and, and that's the problem about building the items that he did. He went for a Yomu's Ghost Blade and a Bilgewater Cutlass. Like, 
Those are not, I, I mean, especially the Bilgewater Cutlass is not a Rengar item. Like, he needs like a, like a Warmog's armor, or like, you know, a, a Randuin's Omen or something. Uh, Fusey Eye does get the red buff, so nice pick there for him. And definitely needs a little bit more of this tankiness, especially facing these two little champions, such as Kog'Maw and Tristana, in the late game. Exactly. Like, what What do you have to deal with Kog'Maw Tristana? Like, there's no tank that can deal with that much high-powered hybrid damage. Like, uh, so so the only way that you can deal with Ninja and, and Wei Zhao right now is to kill them. Yuzi has got damage for days, but I'm not sure he can make it past Sao Mei. It's just going to go all over him. Uh, and, and Kord's burst damage is only going to be effective as long as he can find someone to burst down. And you see magic resistance items on both carries for uh, for World Elite. Or rather on all three carries if you count Sao Mei. All right, so now we are waiting for World Elite to just engage a big fight that sooner or later is going to happen after all. Well, who will come out on top? We do have a Guardian Angel on Salme. Well, he's now unstoppable, pretty much. Yeah, there's no way Salme is gonna die to just about anything. You can see Cole is not even fighting them. He's he's just trying to hide. World Elite in the top lane. They're stronger. They're so strong that four v fives are fights that they can win uh, because they have the front line there in uh, Skarner and Braum and the back line with enough range to basically hide behind them forever. So it is up to Insect to start these fights with a pick that will be uh, more effective than World Elite have damage. I don't think that's necessarily possible, but with the culling, anything is possible. Just kidding, the culling doesn't change anything. It doesn't. Oh my gosh, look at Ninja's ults right now. The flank off the teleport though. Cola's getting in there into the back line. Ninja in complete control of his champion and Wei Zhao as well. More damage than they know what to do with. World Elite just destroy the front line, the back line, every line. They're curving lines into a circle. World Elite just everything they could possibly want from that team fight. Ninja's gonna die to the turret though. <laughs> oh, and he's trying to like kill Sin, but of course they're on the same team. I don't think it works that way. Three very low health champions for World Elite, but uh, five very low health champions for Starhorn Royal Club. So low that they're dead. And now finally regaining the kill count, the gold count, and just about the game, World Elite will look to close out game number one or game number two, rather, and split this series for the second time in LPL. 1-1 one, one versus Starhorn. That was the first death of Korn in this fight, actually, and yeah, World Elite. <laughs> Ninja dies to turret, Conan dies to turret, and... Can they actually finish? The okay, yeah, there are minions taking the turret, and at long last, the Nexus will fall. World Elite take game number two versus Starhorn Royal Club. Yeah, and this is a nice win for World Lead, finally. They get a, an honorable one from this week. But it's I don't think that it is enough to keep themselves in the first place. They've uh, lost so much already. One to five, well, five losses. And especially against Young Glory, of course, they have stepped up their game, but everyone expected World Lead to pick up this best of two series. All right, while we finish things off with a little bit of lag, we can update the standings for you guys. With their 1-1 performance, World Elite will actually, or yeah, World Elite will actually climb into uh, a second place tie with Edward Gaming, who picked up zero points in their 0-2 loss versus Young Glory. So we and EDG are tied. Starhorn pick up one point, so they stay the same amount back from World Elite, still just 1-2-0 uh, away from grabbing that uh, second place. From, uh, from World Elite. So overall, not a whole lot to say about the second series other than both teams having uh, or showing their strengths. World Elite still looking incredibly shaky with their just farm until late game strategy, but when it works, it works out very, very well and is almost a guaranteed win. And that is going to do it for our last game of the night. Any final words on your analysis for tonight's games? Well, it's just lucky for World Elite that... Uh... Starhorn tried to play their game. They didn't get annihilated in the early and they tried to go for the farm because Starhorn was pretty much not doing anything in the first matchup and then in the second one. So that's really good for World Lead, but it's not going to happen in, in every single match that they're going to play in the future. So that would be it. Thanks a lot for watching us and wrap it up. Give it to you to wrap it up.
Yeah, Starhorn versus uh, World Elite Academy and OMG versus LGD. Haven't seen We, uh, we Academy or LGD in a while. It'd be nice to watch them coming up next week. So don't forget to tune in next week. Same time, same channel for Starhorn versus World Elite Academy and LGD taking on OMG. And we'll have those games and a whole lot more. Keep in mind, tomorrow, a couple hours later than scheduled, uh, we'll have the schedules out for you for the Demacia Cup. That'll be broadcast here on uh, LPLEN. So thank you guys for watching. We appreciate you coming out tonight and supporting the LPL broadcast, of course, here in English on Twitch TV. Thank you so much for coming out. We'll see you tomorrow for the Demacia Cup. Have a good night.